Hey, 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 this is Apostle Shalonda Treasure, and I just want to share with you the revelations that God has given me over the past few days. Forgive me for not posting this before, but I do believe that everything is always in its perfect timing. So um, there's a few numbers that I've been seeing. And for those of you who don't understand what it means when I share uh, the numbers or the prophetic message that God has given me concerning a particular number, um, he just uses me different sometimes. And sometimes it may be because uh, there's a few people who are seeing the same number a lot of times and they don't know what it means, but they noticed, they paid attention. They saw it more multiple times. Like, like, why am I seeing this so many times? For me, the number 44 is very prevalent or 44, 444, four, four, all the fours. Um, and the message that God gave me for that, that word, that message, those numbers is that all things are coming together. The box is, is being sealed. All the corners are met north, south, east, and west, all the elements, everything that God has ever created is going to work hard as ever to get me what it is that God has for me. Um, I'm going to align myself because I'm a part of the corners, right? And I'm going to speak what I need to speak. And I am going to believe uh, and have faith. And I am going to praise him in advance, not from a, a solemn or glum place. I'm going to praise him in advance because all of these things are working together. So that's an example of how God deals with me with numbers. Um, numbers do have meaning and, and most of us know that we've, um, whether you've been in church or not in church, somewhere a number is being, is, is said and it has a valid point. Um, I don't know, I don't know about many of y'all, but 7-Eleven is my birthday. So when I pass by a 7-Eleven store, it makes me smile for some reason. I don't know because it's just associated. Um, but, but so numbers do make a difference, but God uses me to speak prophetically to that number so that whoever the individual may be, they may be like, oh my God, I've been seeing it. And I've been wondering what the heck is God trying to tell me? Well, sometimes he will give me particular numbers. So if you can relate to it, then good. The message is for you. If you cannot relate to it, it's okay. Okay. It's okay. And I'm not just pulling this out of a hat. So sometimes people may want to say, well, tell me what this means. And I, you know, if he gives me something, then great, but he doesn't always give me something on the spare of the moment, um, just for anybody's number. This really is what God is telling me to say, because the mass majority of people may be experiencing this in some way, shape or form. It's the same thing. If God showed me the color red in my sleep and he says, Hey, those of you who are seeing a whole bunch of red for no reason, God is saying, be aware of, you know, or, or that your greatest passion is going to come to fruition, whatever he may say. Okay. And so I just want to be used by him to do what he wants when he wants it. He knows his children best and however he chooses to speak to them is up to him. So you, some people may find it strange, especially because I'm a an apostle and they're like, you know, are we supposed to even, what, what did God not create? Did he not create all of it? Mm -mm. He created all of it and nothing is impure in and of itself. Jesus said, um, it's what we make of it that makes it impure. And so when we listen to people tell us, you know, all this stuff that we shouldn't use and what we shouldn't do and how we shouldn't, have, mm, God will choose to deal with his children the way he deals with his children because he knows us best. And so I digress with all of that. Let me go ahead and give you a few of the numbers that God has shown me. And I'm also going to give you um, another word that came as I was sleeping over this weekend. Uh, well, let me start with that. So I was sleeping and I saw an accident. Me and my children were in the car and we actually were in it. Um, and my eyes were closed as soon as uh, impact happened, I guess. So we were rolling, but I didn't feel any pain. I didn't feel any um, anything that was hurting me, but I couldn't open my eyes. I couldn't open my eyes in the dream. So that part made me more nervous than anything. I jumped up in my natural um, um, state and, and I'm like, oh my God, what is happening? Immediately when I went back to sleep, I, I re-ended re somebody in their car. So it was another accident of a form. And then in, when I went back to sleep, um, I fell. I kind of lost my balance um, in, in, in that particular dream. And then immediately after that, when I closed my eyes again, he showed me the number three, two, one, three, two, one. And, um, I kind of thought I knew what God was going to say with the three, two, one, but, um, I'll share it with you in a second. So as for the dreams with, uh, the accidents, at first I thought that the first accident and the second accident were just, you know, a warning that there was a physical accident coming. Um, and so God did speak to that. And the only thing he said to tell you is to make sure that you are aware of what's happening while you're driving. Don't, you know, um, don't think that one second doesn't matter because it does. Okay. And, um, but the, but what he showed me was two different things concerning them. Um, the first dream where we were rolling and rolling and rolling and I, I did not feel anything. 
Okay, we were rolling. It was an accident happen, happening, but I couldn't feel it. And my eyes were closed and I felt safe, believe it or not. But what made me feel unsafe is the fact that I could not open them when I needed to open them. I could not open my eyes when I needed to open my eyes. Listen to me. Some of you have been going in circles. God has been protecting you. You have not really been feeling the impact of what's been happening in your life at this moment. You see everything that's happening. You feel weary and discouraged, but you don't feel it. And if you stop and pause for a minute and sit there and think about it, you'll be like, you know what? I, I haven't felt as 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 bad as I could with life being what it is right now. Um, so you felt you were having the accident. The things were happening, but I could not feel it. My eyes were closed and that should have been something of safety for me. But when I could not open my eyes, there was an issue. It made me frantic. Anxiety began to build. And the reason for that, the Holy Spirit said, is because there is, listen, there has been a season where you've been in a cushion. So even with everything that's been happening in life, you had the cushion of the religion that you, that you, use. So it, it, well, let me say more so denominations. You've had the safety of the denomination and the doctrines that you have been uh, experiencing for your whole life. So while you're going in, in the circles and, and tumbling all over, you've been feeling cushioned and protected, not feeling the impact of life as much. But when the time is and the time is coming and now is that they that worship God must worship him in spirit and in truth. That takes you out of the comfort zone. Now you need to open your eyes, but you can't. Things are happening all around you. You're not able to see what's coming. All the, It's happening and you cannot open your eyes. You are in a danger zone, says the Lord. You are in a danger zone. Um, many of you are in a danger zone because now that you need to open your eyes, it's hard for you to do so. Um, this would be for those of you who it's hard to let go of the religious doctrines that we've been taught because, you know, you're not supposed to look for truth. You're not supposed to search. But Jesus said that he would send the Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us into all truth, which means that there still must be something that we don't know yet. And with that being said, when I look back at what Jesus said to the woman and he said, there'll be a day where you don't worship in the mountains and you don't worship here or there. They that worship God will worship him in spirit and in truth. And we are coming into the dispensation of the, 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 the era, the age of spirit and in truth. New wine is being poured. And many of you are still sitting in old wine skins, that, con that cush cushion that's, that's, that's bracing you and you feel all safe. And even though you can't see, you feel safe. You So then now it's time to open your eyes and see. And you can't. And you can't. So you're, you're feeling this anxiousness. And the anxiousness that, that you're feeling is saying that you have to get your eyes open by any means necessary. Excuse me, you guys. You have to open your eyes to what's happening or you will miss God. I see a lot of things that, that I know God is not pleased with when we're watching certain prophets and teachers and apostles and um, those that are called to open our eyes and help us to be enlightened in this season. And I see all these comments about, you know, deception and, oh, you just can't be God and all these different things. Well, somebody was saying that when what you believe was being made up or, 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 or revealed, there's always going to be some pushback on every individual that comes to bring uh, uh, truth and revelation, which is what happened to Jesus the Christ. Don't be find, found in the place where you are so stuck on what you know to be true that you do not hear God. Um, it always takes me back to the moment where God is telling Peter to get up and eat all of these unclean meats. And Peter's like, no, God forbid, I won't do that. He immediately had a religious response to God. God is saying you're in this moment. And so he's thinking he's being tested somehow, I believe. Now, let me let, let me see if Peter going to take the bait. No, I'm telling you to get up and eat it. And Peter says what he says. And God says, don't you call unclean what I call clean. And so God is doing that even more so in this season. And eyes are being opened to things that we have been doing based off of religion and not based off spiritual leading. And so this is the age that we are walking into that is of spirit and in truth. Jesus said, I'll be with you until the end of the age. And so the mind of Christ and, and the message of Christ and, and the good news 
right? The good news of Christ. Those things have been taught and we've been teaching them and teaching them and teaching them. And people have been coming into this fold, but we've been missing some things from Jesus. So listen, those of you who understand what I'm saying, pursue the mind of Christ. Put yourself in a position where you are being renewed, by, I mean, transformed by the renewing of your mind and open your eyes. And open your eyes. That anxiety that you're feeling as you're tumbling through life and through these happenstances, you, you are feeling anxious because there must be a shift and you're bucking against the shift. So please do get yourself into alignment with that. And the second dream, me rear-ending someone. Again, the message in that is be very cautious about rear-ending others. What does that mean, Apostle? It means this is not the time for you to be in competition with a sister or a brother or anybody else in creation for that matter, right? God loves all of us. And it's not the time to be in competition with anybody. It's not the time to rear in somebody to throw them off track or not paying attention to what is happening in front of you, not paying attention to what is happening with the person that is in front of you. Sometimes you may have to yield. Sometimes you may have to go around them sometimes, but whatever it is, be cautious that you don't take your eyes off of what's happening with another. We who are the strong should be bearing the infirmity of the weak, not forgetting that they exist. Not not paying attention to the fact that they're trying to get along. As a matter of fact, when you are riding behind somebody, you should more so be paying attention because maybe just maybe something may be going on with their car. Can you pull over to to help them? So we need to pay more attention to each other, loving our neighbor as ourselves. This is not the season. Never is there is a season, especially with the believer, where we should be trying to get everything, 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 and forgetting about a brother. As a matter of fact, the scriptures tell us to see to the see to the wealth. And the prosperity of others. Mm-hmm. See to it. Think of them more highly than you do yourself. So you can tell me, well, you've been promoting yourself. I mean, promote other people long enough. It's time for you to promote you. Well, if I promote others and if you're telling me that I need to promote myself, then maybe you're the one that's supposed to promote me. You understand? And the same thing goes with someone else. I make it my business to share as much as I can from other people without any expectations because that that I sow, I shall also reap. I'm supposed to reap. But we get hard hearted sometimes. And you know what? I'm not going to do that. And she should be able to do that for herself. No, this is a cycle. Again, everything about life is a flow. So if you stop up the flow. So I promote others and then those that find the value in me, those that see that there's some worth in me should be the ones to promote me. And I'll continue to do the same for others. That's how it's supposed to flow. But we're so busy taking our eyes off of what's happening with others to put it on ourselves because somebody told us to do so. Somebody told us that it was it was it was sexy. <laughs> you know what I mean? To totally forget about other people and only think about yourself. And we call it self-care. That's not self-care. Self-care is not burning bridges. Self-care is not forgetting about people who actually could be there to give you a hand up and you give other people a hand up and then they give another person a hand up. They may just be that for you. So we got to stop thinking this selfish mentality and calling it somehow a new movement and empowerment. If you are a believer in the walk of Jesus Christ, you then there's never there should never be that moment where you feel like okay I'm done with folks and I'm only going to do me now life would have you to think that that's the thing to do to get your peace of mind but now nah, there's so much peace in loving people for real there's so much peace in serving another individual okay so be careful before you have to before you end up rear ending rear ending someone as opposed to you know being there seeing that they end up needing help or you know vice versa following instructions if God says go around go around he knows that they're not ready to go to the next place they're going to take their time they're easing through the process they're not bothered about time and you have some place that you need to be by five so he says okay go ahead and get in the passing lane go ahead and go next to him uh, uh right past them but that doesn't mean you have to do that in a in a huff or a puff or with road rage you understand um, when you let somebody else out in traffic, don't do that with an attitude. Be, you know what? Go ahead. You know, it's OK. Right. And if you have to go past them, it's OK to not have a good day. Everything doesn't have to be done in such a rush where we forget about others. If they're going at their own pace, why are you mad? 
That's why we have long suffering. And so I need you guys to, to hear what the Lord is saying in this regard uh, when it comes to both those first dreams. That's the third dream where I lost my balance. Um, I was watching uh, Les Brown, the, the, the great Les Brown motivational speaker, awesome man. He was talking about a situation that he had and how he's been falling a lot lately. He's 77 years old. 77. That's one of the numbers, by the way. But he's 77 years old and, and he is falling. And one of his friends, she says to him, well, that makes sense because, you know, of some aligning that's happening um, in in the heavenlies. And uh, she didn't say, I think she said in the, in the, in the cosmos or in the universe. And so he laughs. Right. And I'm laughing with him because I'm like, oh, he just doesn't know. He's like, you know, that's not my that's above my pay grade, you know, laughing about um, the revelation that she gave. So God wants me to 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 help some of you with this. The world in itself, the universe, which is God's creation, too. I don't know why we'd be trying to leave the universe out. <laughs> The universe is not a substitution for God. It just is another creation of his. And so nevertheless, the universe is shifting. And I think I said this, and those of you who were on the live that I did for that word, then you received this. But the universe is shifting. Things are changing. And because of the change and the tilt and all that, those words have been coming up lately, then there's a lot of imbalance. So even those who didn't have like a vertigo feeling before or those who didn't feel off balance before, those who've never fallen before, um, they, they may be doing it now because things are shifting. Now, hear me. This is the word of the Lord for that. Because things are shifting does not mean that things are out of alignment. It doesn't mean that things are not together. It doesn't mean that there's not a purpose. It just means it feels uncomfortable because you're, you, the, the shift normally makes you have to get up and stretch and, and crack bones and all these different things and or adjust to a new space and you don't got comfortable in this space, right? Um, and so we don't really like to think about shifting, but it doesn't have to be a bad thing. Some of you are looking at what's happening right now, looking at what's going on in your life. Life changes all the time. Seasons come and seasons go. And so now we have to get to the point where we're preparing for seasons as opposed to allowing the seasons to knock us on our back or knock us to our knees. And we're not praying. <laughs> OK, and so, yes, the universe is the galaxies, the stars, the moons, the, all these things, the sun, everything that, that works together for us every day. We're not cursing the sun. We don't want to praise the sun, but we do know that the sun is, is used by God to light up the world. The moon is the night light. Of, of, of the world. The stars are beautiful and we love it when it comes to the beauty of it. But when people talk about it, we get all cringy as Christians and we have to stop doing that. How, how do you realize that we may limit God more than any other situation that we be arguing about? We all want to argue with every other denomination or, or, or faith or, or atheists or whoever we want to argue about them not believing in God. But we definitely don't believe fully in him either. Because if we did, then all the things that he's ever created, we will find out what's the pure thing about it, as opposed to always talking about what's not pure about it. So I, I have to take him as is the whole thing. Even when he says that he made the, the, wicked, the wicked for the evil day, I have to understand that that has a, 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 some type of um, um, place in his grand scheme of things. What's pure about wickedness? I don't know. <laughs> Cause I can't think, but, but, but I watched plenty of movies where, where it was, where we saw the inner part of the villain, the heart of them, that they're, even though we hate what they did, that they started off with a reason why they did it. You know, somebody got super angry and they didn't know how to get the help they needed to deal with the anger. And so thus they went and did something they should not have done, which is the reason why we do have to do the work. But when we judge situations, then, then it takes us away from God and what God may want to do or say. Okay, again, Peter, get up and eat. No, God, all of those are filthy animals. <laughs> I'm paraphrasing. I would not eat that. Those are unclean. I can't do that. And in your mind, you're thinking, oh, the devil's busy. He's trying to trick me into doing something that was against God's law. God says, I am the law. I, I am the principles. I am. So I can shift it or change it whenever I want. I can adjust it. I can give you new revelation about it. I am God. So we have to get out of that. Uh, it doesn't, we don't worship anything. We just, we, 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 we are grateful for it all and how it all comes together to make up such a beautiful existence, a beautiful world. It, 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 it explains God more than anything else. And then the sun comes. And to, to share these truths with us, to share how we would see it, to share us coming back into oneness with God. He, he shares the beauty of the relationship. 
And then he sends the Holy Spirit. Okay, I'm going to send the Holy Spirit to lead you and guide you into all truth. Be open to that. And so God takes us through this journey and we're learning more and more. But we're so stubborn that we think that we cannot be moved and nothing should ever be changed. And God doesn't ever change his mind. Yes, he's the same yesterday, today and forevermore. Which means that yesterday, today and forevermore, I can change whatever I want. <laughs> yesterday, today, and forevermore, I can make it better. I can make it bolder. I can create a whole new color that you've never seen and, and, and call it something. And it's going to be something. I am God. I am. I am. My goodness. I felt that y'all. I hope y'all understand that. And so God is saying, listen, there's an imbalance in the earth, but it does not mean that you are going crazy or that everybody else is crazy. Everything is just coming into alignment. And as it comes into alignment, it may feel uncomfortable, but you'll catch the balance in, in just a second. You'll be back positioned right uh, and the balance will be well. Um, so the number three, two, one that God gave me at first, I was like, Oh, you about to do the countdown again. Three, two, one, suddenly everything's about to happen. And so that is a part of it, right? Get, be, get, get ready to count down to your blessing. Get ready to count down to the manifestation that God, um, um, has revealed concerning you. Uh, the people who are coming in and out of your life, using discernment, spending a lot of extra time. So this is what the Lord says. You're going to be, uh, spending time, timing, timing three two one going in a sequence in an order you're going to be timing um, um a lot of the things that are about to be done in your life in other words um I was supposed to do this by the age of such and such. And God is like, nah, we just been counting down. Now you're about to receive that thing that you've been counting down for. I know it seems like it's been a long time, but guess what? The manifestation is coming. And so, or it's here. And so sequences of time, God is about to have you start documenting things that happen in what year it, this happened in this year. And it did this, and this is what it looked like. And this is what, this was, this is what was happening in your life at the time. Um, but then I got here and I could see the change in my life and change in uh, my circumstances and change. And, and so I've grown, God is going to start having you count. The see, and putting things into sequential order so you can recognize and see the things that he's done. And once you do that, when the next thing happens, you won't miss it. And you'll understand it. And you'll look at it in a totally different way. So get ready for the countdown. Three, two, one. Putting things in sequential order. Starting from here, going all the way back to childhood. Here's the other part of that. Some of you are about to do the healing work. If you playing pity pat with your counselor or your coach or, or anything right now, stop it. Because this is the time where you're about to go back and go speak to that child. Go speak to that teenager. Go speak to that the, the wife, uh, the young wife um, right before she got married. Go back and speak to the divorced woman. You're going to go back in time, three, two, one, counting down where you're going to heal in this season. And you're going to be accepting of the fact that God will place in your life who you need in your life at that particular time so that you can go through your healing. So that three, two, and one, that number, that's what that stands for if you keep seeing it if it comes up somehow come back to this word or write this down so that you can remember okay god is reassuring me and this is what god wants me to do okay um i, I saw the three two one and then i woke up and it was 12 13 in the afternoon and so the 12 and the 13 and you see the three and the two and the one in there but with the 12 13 all god is simply saying is if you want to rise you're going to have to partner with somebody in this season in order to become one. In order for you to rise, you're going to have to partner with somebody in this season in order to come back to one. Um, and so you're going to you're, you're going to end up coming into connection with different people. But are they your people now? Love everybody. But know who needs to be in your circle in this season um, um, because it is very important. And so he's going, if you want to rise, make your connection. Some of you, I have a coaching group for ladies uh, and, and so we can get make healthy our mental. Some of you may be in the group but not participating in the group. Now is the time to participate because your help is coming from somewhere in order for you to come back into oneness. Do not deny it. Do not keep it at bay. Do not only tippy toe around it and then say, oh my God, my life sucks. Okay. Tap in. And the number 77, completion, 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 but also rest. Com um, completion and then rest. Complete it and then rest. If you are a giver, you can sow in these amounts. If you just receiving it, amen. But I love you. Kingdom come, MP. Cash out.